Well, good morning and welcome back to Pentor Cars Cornish Car Collectors and the second day of our Kerno 300 Road Trip Challenge. Also, today, happy St. Piran's Day. Yeah, that's right. Our drive around Cornwall coincides nicely with the National Day of Cornwall, which is held on the 5th of March each year. Now, it's just gone 6.57 and the sun is coming up here. Um, in fact, I'll just show you quick footage of me starting the car as the sun rose this morning. Cold start, remember? Here it is. And driving it over to this nice spot so we can film this introduction. We made it here yesterday to Penzance by the skin of our teeth. Sunset was 18.09 and we arrived here in the car park at 18.08. It was amazing. Today though, the challenge is that much greater. We've still got 10 stops, but we've got further to drive and we've got six minutes less daylight hours as we travel from west to east. The sun, well, it's just risen here in Penzance at 6.57 this morning and the sun sets at 6.06 .06 in Kilkhampton, which is the final village really before you cross from Cornwall over to Devon. Now yesterday was great fun, but I learned loads about the route being that this is the first time that we've done this. For those of you returning from having watched part one to part two, thanks very much. Last night I took myself out for an Indian meal and this morning I've had a Premier Inn breakfast, so I'm raring to go. Right then, we have a glorious day forecast today here in Cornwall. It's also St. Piran's Day and we have a brilliant, breathtaking 160 mile drive along the north coast of Cornwall where we'll stop at 10 locations, We'll take a photo at each, probably have a coffee or a bit of a chill at each along the way. But we've got to get to Kilkhampton by 1806. This is a bigger ask than yesterday. And, well, before we get started, I should probably say that the first stop on our route isn't one of our 10. But if you're bringing an MG or a Rover this far southwest into Cornwall, there's one place you have to call in along the way. I'll share that once we get in the car and we get on the move. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and please do subscribe if you haven't already to see loads more of my car antics. But for now, let's jump in this car and let's get going. I've had to put my jacket on because whilst it's really lovely out there, it's freezing. So we'll see if the temperature improves as the day progresses. Um, now I'll run through the route for today in a moment, but first of all, we've got a quick stop to make, which isn't one of the 10 that we have planned. And that's because if you're in an MG Rover this far southwest into Cornwall, well, there's one place that you have to stop. So our destination is Newlyn. Uh, a couple of things about Newland, it's only a mile and a half uh, away from Penzance, so quite a short drive, but a couple of things about Newland. Uh, the first thing that, that's really interesting, the first fact I suppose, is Ordnance Data Newland. Now back in 1915, uh, some work started to try and set the average or the mean sea level for the world, for the entire globe. And this was attempted in a few sites, but it was actually here in Cornwall, in Newland, where the sea level was set over a number of years and that means that well whenever we talk about sea level uh, so an example um, Mount Everest is about 29,000 feet above sea level what we're actually saying right across the world is that Mount Everest is 29,000 feet above Newland sea level because Newland is the mean average sea level for the entire world and that's cool but there is an even more impressive fact about Newlyn, and that's where we're heading now. Tolkern Garage. Now, Tolkern Garage is a local garage run, I think, by RC Harding and Son. They've run they run this one, and they've got a site in Mausel as well, which is a bit further on along the coastline. And Tolkern used to be an MG Rover dealer, and they've still got all the signs up. So, if you're driving an MG Rover, this far southwest and you happen to find yourself in Newland, make sure you stop for a photo. And that's exactly what we're going to do. It's about a couple of hundred meters up here. So let's take a look. 
it's just on this corner if I remember correctly. Yes, here we go. Look at this. Sorry about that, but uh, well, it's the law. Just like it's the law when you drive an old car and you see another one parked in the car park to park next to it. If you're driving past the garage with the Rover livery still up, you stop and take a photo. Right, on to our first destination today then. So we visited the most southerly point on UK mainland yesterday. Now it's the most westerly. We're off to Land's End. And uh, whilst we make that drive, I thought I'd talk you through the route. So from Land's End, where are we going? Land's End, then to St Ives, then Godrevy Lighthouse. It's a lovely view from there. Then onto Newquay, then to Padstow, then Port Isaac, then Tintagel, then Boscastle, then Bewd, and finally ending the Kerno 300 at Kirkhampton. Hey, look at this, a Rover Streetwise, and it's the courtesy car for RC Hardings and Son. Lucky uh, he wasn't there when we called in earlier, or I'd have been there yapping about MGs and Rovers for hours. Anyway, let's drive to Land's End. Come on, let's go. We've made it then to Land's End. Yesterday we were at the most southerly point on UK mainland and today the most westerly. And it's a really beautiful day to be here. I'll flip my camera around in a minute and show you the view. Of course it was from here in May 2012 where the Olympic torch for the London Olympics set off on its 838 miles all the way to John O'Groats. We'll have to do that drive one day. But uh, for now, let's just take in the view. And uh, if you look that way, you'll see Senn and Cove. We're not going there today. Uh, but a lovely place to visit uh, but yeah well let's just take in the view glorious here So that was Land's End, just come up through Senan Cove and St Just and now we're on the coastal road all the way to St Ives and this is a beautiful road to drive. Atlantic on the left and Moorland on the right, hopefully it comes out on the dash camera there. Uh, don't have a great deal of fuel, the fuel light is on and there aren't many fuel stations around here but there is one in St Ives. Um, we should make it but the type of driving that we're doing, lots of gear changes, means that the car, well, it's drinking a lot of fuel. We'll find out in a minute when, when I stop. But for now, we're not gonna to worry too much about the fuel, not too much fuel anxiety. We're just gonna drive this lovely road and, uh, and take it in. If I can find a nice bit of music to go with this, I will do. So, uh, cue the driving music. Well, that was a bit of luck. A fuel station just as I was driving out of St. Just. Well, I say a bit of luck. At 161.9 a litre, it's uh, fairly dear, but doesn't matter. We will, um, doesn't matter. Keeping these little garages going is really important. So that will get us the distance between here and I'm sure somewhere up the north coast where we'll find another fuel station to really fuel up fully okay on with the drive then and it really is a pretty one 
as we drive out of St. Just, we've got this lovely old mining museum here too. Uh, uh, the Giva tin mine there. What a lovely place to visit that is. Okay, let's keep going. Well, this really is a lovely road. As I said earlier, the Atlantic there on the left looking lovely and blue here in the sun. And then, oh, that's the car coming. You should get through, yes. So the Atlantic over there to the left looking absolutely lovely and blue in this sun. And also to the right, well, all around really, um, this kind of rugged Cornish coastland which uh, shows lots of signs of mining, lots of piles of rocks, lots of chimneys, lots of old stone buildings. This um, really is one of the great finds of this little road trip, and we've had a few, but this really is very pretty. I mean, here's an old mine building now. I might stop and take a quick picture, but what a treat this road is. Come and drive it. Wow, what a road, and it was lovely to drive it without any fuel anxiety. Okay, so here we are driving into St Ives, which attracts loads of surfers to its beaches and the pavement cafes and the galleries, including, of course, the St Ives Tate, attracts lots of artists. It's a real hotspot for artists. The Tate St Ives is just one of four Tate galleries around the country. The others include the Tate Britain and the Tate Modern, both in London and the Tate Liverpool. There's also a big seal colony here and around St Ives. Let's uh, stop, grab a coffee and uh, take in the view. Well, St Ives was certainly busy and a good example of why you probably want to do this type of road trip, why I should have done this road trip over two weekdays as opposed to one weekday and one weekend, but I did want to do it on St Piran's Day, so there we go. So it's sunny, it's St Piran's Day, and it's a weekend, and that means the roads are a little bit busier right now, and St Ives, all the car parks are packed. So getting a really nice picture of the car, uh, with St Ives in the background, kind of failed at that, but I've got uh, a nice shot of the view of St Ives. Uh, we did manage to get a picture of the car in front of the Tate, and now, we're driving across the very pretty road, or I know it gets pretty in a moment, the very pretty road to get to take a decent view of the Godreathy Lighthouse. So uh, let's get underway. See you there. Good grief, it says that the Godreathy Lighthouse car park is full. What is going on today? Well, we'll still go up and have a look, take a picture and uh, if needs be come back but I'm sure we'll find somewhere to park and have a drink. We've made it then to Godreathy. Uh, we're just on the east side now of St Ives Bay. In fact there is St Ives over there. Um, so we're here at Godreathy. Beautiful views here. I'll probably put up after this bit of spiel. I'll put up a bit of a um, panning shot of the view here at Godreathy. It really is beautiful. Also, don't trust the car park signs at Godreathy because there was quite a bit of parking here at this small National Trust car park right out on the headland. So um, yeah, don't trust those. So here we are, it's a bit windy. And here at Godreathy, you've got Godreathy Island, which is about there, that's it. Um, it's uninhabited, but it does have the Godreathy lighthouse on it. It's only a couple of hundred feet really off the shore, but very, very spectacular. 
Anyway, we'll cut now to the panning shot of the view here at Godreathy. Um, I'll probably spend another 20 minutes or so here and then we'll get on the road. Well, Godreathy was a real treat. I almost didn't put it on the list of stops, but boy, I would have missed out had I not done so. Really beautiful, spectacular place, uh, particularly on a day like today, and it wasn't too busy either. Um, I think it's also where the Celtic Sea meets the Atlantic, so, you know, a little bit of trivia. Okay, on now to somewhere completely different. Let's go to Newquay. A quick impromptu stop off here at a place called Hell's Mouth, which is absolutely spectacular and well worth a visit. I stopped because they've got a coffee shop and very nice it is too. Got a coffee and a bit of millionaire shortbread and also bumped into some people who are out for a nice pleasure drive today in this beautiful sunny day in their 65 plate Ford Mustang. So we had to have a chat and well, my Mustang badge had to go on the car. Here's some photographs. Lovely. Uh, so. On now to Newquay, where it's St. Piran's Day, so we've got to get a pasty. Let's go. It's really windy, but here we are in Newquay, which is famous for these lovely sandy beaches. Look at Fishtal there behind me, and you've got Watergate Bay, a number of other beaches, really beautiful here. And also a fantastically vibrant nightlife. I had loads of decent party nights here in Newquay. Uh, now today, we've come up to the Headland Hotel. Here it is, um, because this is where Harris, McGuinness and Flintoff met in a recent episode of Top Gear. So if it's good enough for Top Gear, it's good enough for Cornish car collectors. Right, let's get back in the car because we are really behind schedule. Let's go. Okay, so the pasty was great. Nuki was great, but we now have two problems. The first one is I've been taking my time today. It's nearly three o'clock, and we think we've still got six destinations to stop at. In fact, if I drove straight to Kilkhampton from here, it would take me an hour and 10 minutes, and that doesn't include us stopping off at five places along the way. But that isn't the biggest issue right now. The biggest issue is I'm a cheapskate. And back at that petrol station just outside of St Just, where it was £1.61 a litre, I decided I wouldn't fuel the car up completely. I would fuel it 20 quid's worth in, get to Newquay, and then fuel up properly at one of the cheaper garages. Problem is, turns out Newquay is completely out of fuel. Morrison's is out, Texaco are out of fuel. I assume that's attributable to the Russian assault on the Ukraine, which um, is terrible, and my issue is small fry in comparison. But it looks like we're going to struggle to get fuel. Now, the fuel light is on. I might have 20 miles left in the tank. It's a garage six miles away. We're gonna go for that. It's in the right direction. It is taking us off the coast road a little bit. We will pick it up again 
assuming we can get fuel. If we can't, well, that brings the Kerno 300 to an abrupt halt, which would be a real shame because we've got some lovely places still to visit. We've got the weather, we've got the car, we just don't have the fuel. So let's take it steady um, and conserve fuel as much as we can and see if we can find some and then pick up the cliff road again in a moment. Right. I'll update you in a minute. Okay, we're just under a mile away from the next petrol station. I've been to two already and uh, no go. So we've got very little fuel left. I'll take a picture of it in a minute when we stop. Um, bit concerned at the moment. Let's see what happens. We're just driving past Newquay Airport here. So still in Newquay. Not enough fuel to get home even if we went on the main roads. And we want to finish this challenge. So, fingers crossed, half a mile to go. Contemplate doing some freewheeling, it's got that bad. But uh, hopefully they'll have some fuel. Hopefully we'll be able to fuel up. Hopefully we'll be able to continue. Otherwise it'll be a phone call to my brother, uh, about 50 miles away, to get him to come with a tank of fuel. But that means we won't finish because to be honest, we're right on the cusp of it now. Okay, there's the petrol station in the distance. Fingers crossed. Still a beautiful day here. We've had loads of fun. Is this the end of it though? Let's see. Okay, just coming up now. Just coming up now. Oh, there are people parked. It looks... Yes! We're okay. No, no, no. No, what are they out of? They're out of diesel. They're out of diesel. Looks like we've still got unleaded fuel. We can carry on. Oh, I'll show you the... Um, well, my fuel light really is on now. But anyway, let's fuel up and let's crack on. So I've just pulled out of the fuel station where you could only dispense a maximum of 30 pounds worth of fuel. So that's put us up to about, what, three eighths of a tank, just under half a tank of fuel. Um, that's enough to carry on, but if we find this problem again along the way, whilst we might be able to complete the Kerno 300, I'm not convinced I'll be able to get home. But I haven't really seen this problem anywhere else at the moment. Um, no other fuel station seems to have had a shortage or be rationing fuel, just the Nuki area. Uh, and as such, I think we'll probably carry on. We'll see how we get on. Will we make it or will we not? The problem we have is we've got quite a few places to, to still call in. We've only got three hours of daylight left. Uh, and from here, we've still got to go to Padstow, to Port Isaac, to Tintagel, to Boscastle, to Bude, and then end up at Kilkhampton. Um, I think if I drove straight there, it would take me over an hour. We've got three hours to do the coast road. Plus, there are a few places that I kind of wanted to call in on along the way, or at least drive through. So, I suggest get my head down, get driving, and um, let's see if we can finish the Kerno 300. Here we are then, coming into Padstow, or Padstein, as it's affectionately known. Uh, by the local people because of course uh, the celebrity chef Rick Stein has set up quite a few businesses here in Padstow. Now I come here quite a bit because the Camel Trail which is the old railway that kind of links Bodmin, Weybridge and uh, Padstow together uh, has been turned into a cycle track so my boys and I, my children and I, we regularly ride that track so we come here quite a bit for fish and chips or an ice cream, it's a pretty little place. And because we're running behind on schedule, I'm gonna pull up in the Harborside car park, take a picture, and then crack on. So uh, your view is coming up right now.
Here we are then driving into Port Isaac, which of course has been made famous because of its association with uh, Doc Martin, the sitcom with Martin Clunes, which is, which is based here. I think I'll go right down, see if I can take a cheeky picture. Let's see. Yes, we can make it. We'll be unpopular, but we'll get a nice picture. And then on our way, we've got about an hour and a half of sun left. Tintagel Boss Castle viewed, still to go. Oh, it's tight down here. Ah. I'll go there. Thank you. It is tight here in Port Isaac. Probably shouldn't really have driven down, but we did. You okay? Thanks. Okay, here we are. Let's take a picture and let's get on our way. How to be universally hated in Port Isaac. Drive down through the streets, take a picture and then drive back up again. Here we go. Sorry everyone. I am not popular here. Cheers, lads. It is quite narrow. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry, not sorry, really, because it was worth it for the picture. We're out. Port Isaac, tick done. Now, onto one of my favorites, Tintagel. About 25 minutes away, hour and a half of sun left. Let's go. The sun really is low now and it's creating those long kind of late afternoon shadows which are mysterious and eerie. And well that's a perfect time to drive into Tintagel because you see this is a mysterious place as well thanks to its association with King Arthur, Merlin and the Knights of the Round Table. But if that doesn't tickle your fancy, well you've always got the 14th century post office which I'm about to drive past actually. I'll try and pull up in front of that later on and take a picture. If I manage it, I'll put it on the screen now. Um, you'll know before I do if, uh, if I've managed to take that picture. So the 14th century post office, well worth a visit, but so is the spectacular ruined Tintagel Castle that sits out on the cliff top here, which is well worth a, a walk around. Um, today, the day's been lovely. Today it would be really fantastic to walk around that. So. Um, Again, well worth a visit, and they've got that lovely statue of Arthur up there as well, which makes for a great picture. So we're driving through Tintagel now. I'm going to head out to the Camelot Hotel, which is right out on the headland, for our photo. Again, another mysterious place. 
Tintagel really is one of my favourite places in Cornwall to visit. There's nothing else like it and there's loads to do here. Um, so well worth a visit. I'm sorry Tintagel that today it's going to be a fleeting one but it really does look spectacular here at this time of, uh, this time of day with these conditions. Ahead of us now at the Camelot Hotel. Wow, look at that. Okay, let's take some pictures and take in the view. Um, and then it's on to Boscastle. Tintagel, I wish I had more time, uh, but I don't because it's now 20 past five, so we've got 50 minutes before sunset, and that means we'll definitely get to Boscastle. We might get to Bude, but as for Kilkhampton, well, we're going to be arriving after sunset, so how much light there's going to be, we'll see. We might get there still in the daylight, and if we do, well, that's a real success to have got right around Cornwall. Uh, and visited all the places that we said we're going to. Anyway, on to Bells Castle now. Um, it was nice to see the Aston Martin DB9, the one that's been all um, painted and dressed up by some artists. Nice to still see that there. It's looking uh, a bit sad for itself, but still quite an impressive thing to see on the clifftop of Tintagel. Two V8s together in that picture. Right, Bells Castle's about two and a half miles away. Uh, about six minutes, so let's go. Say Bos Castle to anyone over 25 years old and they will immediately be minded of the terrible floods of 2004. A flash flood that took hold of Bos Castle in August, washing huge amounts of rainwater from the surrounding hills through the village, where the water level peaked at nearly three metres high. There was loads of debris, including some cars, and all of that washed into the harbour. And people, well, they lost their homes, their businesses. It was really terrible. Boscastle, I think, flooded again in 2007, but it was nowhere near as bad. Outside of this, Boscastle is a cracking place to spend a few hours. The harbour is protected by a very natural inlet, which is, well, quite spectacular. But uh, yeah, lovely place to visit, and we've really enjoyed this very quick visit to Boscastle. Just driving out of Boscastle, which is a lovely little village, and nice and quiet at this time of night, it turns out. So we're able to get a couple of really nice pictures. On to Bude then, and we're due to arrive in Bude at 18.03, three minutes before sunset. So I would suggest we're definitely going to get to Kilkhampton in the dying light at best. But to think that we got around this far and we're gonna to get to Bude before sunset is pretty good really, given, given how much dithering I did earlier on today. So um, let's push on, it's 14 miles. So we'll drive to Bude, we'll get some photographs. And uh, then our final stop, the end of the Kerno 300, Kilkhampton, probably in the dark. Let's find out. This is Bude, nice beach, nice place, let's go. So we've got, it's a 12 minute drive now to Kilkhampton, which means we're gonna get there at, well, 20 past, 20 past six, about 14 minutes after sunset. Took some nice pictures there of sunset in Bude. So Bude is lovely, but uh, we don't have time to really look around. Right, let's try and get there with a scrap of daylight left. It's still daylight and we're really close. Kilkhampton is 
probably the last large community, village, uh, in Cornwall before crossing over to Devon. I think there are some hamlets that are a little bit closer to Devon, but uh, Kilcampton really is the last village. Um, still daylight, the sun's still there, I can see it. You can still see me. What's this? What's that sign? Yes! Kilcampton! Right, I need to jump out and take this photo quickly. Yes, 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 yes. yes. We made it! We made it, we made it! Right, let's go find somewhere to park when we're in gear. Kerno 300, finished. Well, 330, but we'll talk about that in a minute. And in the daylight. Now I tried filming this wrap up yesterday after I got to Kilkhampton and took a couple of the photographs. But well, to be honest, it got way too dark. In fact, here's some footage of me trying to film this last night. Well, we did it. I mean, the light really is dying here. So I'm gonna try and wrap up quickly or else I'm gonna to have to do it tomorrow. 330 miles. Now, time you take off the 10 miles from my house to Kremel and 20 or so miles where I got a little bit lost and kind of looked back on myself, all not on camera, of course, as I tried to navigate Cornwall without sat-nav, and it rounds off at 300 miles, the Kerno 300. And I do believe that if we hadn't had that kind of fuel crisis, our own little fuel crisis, where I almost ran out of fuel, and I promise you that wasn't done for effect, it really came down to the wire, really, for me finding fuel, we found some in Newquay, well, I think I would have got there before sunset. As it happens, we got there 14 minutes after sunset, but still in the daylight. But don't worry, I did manage to find fuel just outside of Padstow. As for the car, well, it's been absolutely brilliant. I couldn't have picked a better car from the collection to take this road trip. Sure, it's dirty now, and the car's developed a bit of a creak from the near side when steering, which, to be honest, I consider more of a feature than a fault for this car. Another quirk as this car starts to age. It's also been quite juicy to drive it around Cornwall. I've worked it out that we did just over 19 miles to the gallon, which well, I suppose isn't too bad for this big V8. Now this car's an SE, so it's the top end of the range, the highest spec model of the ZT260. And that means it comes with the leather interior and a few other optional extras like heated front seats. But this car also comes with what they call the Highline Stereo, which it has got uh, CD, sat-nav, and it's got analog TV on it. Now, when I bought the car, a lot of the receivers for the stereo are actually in the boot, and that got wet, which is a very common fault for these cars. So I pulled all that out, and I put a new stereo in this car. It's quite expensive, a bit of a retro mod, got all the features that uh, the original had. Now, well, to be honest, I'm thinking it was a complete waste of money because for the whole of the two days, for 330 miles, I haven't switched that stereo on once. And do you know why? Let's remind ourselves why. This car really has been comfortable and great fun. As for the route, well, it was the first time that I've done it. And there are a couple of things I would change. Uh, the first thing is I wouldn't come desperately close to running out of petrol. Avoid that if you can. Uh, the second thing, I suppose, is that I got caught up in a few kind of um, small country lane networks, uh, particularly on the beginning at the beginning of day one there along the southeast corner of Cornwall. And I'd probably just change the route a little bit to avoid those, particularly if you're doing this anywhere near summer because you'd just be constantly reversing back to let people pass. So I changed that. Um, and one thing about the, the filming, it's the first time I've ever done anything like this, and I've had a couple of camera issues, a couple of sound issues along the way. I hope they haven't come across in the video, but we're learning. I've always said that YouTube is a big learning experience for me. As for the best bits, well, there have been loads. 
And the first thing to say is that I picked 20 locations to stop as we drove through Cornwall, but there are 20 more. Such are the treasures that are hidden here around this beautiful county, my favourite county, albeit I know I'm biased. Uh, best bits for me, got to be that road from St Just to St Ives, that picturesque kind of Atlantic on one side and Moorland on the other. That was, that was just stunning. I thought God Reavy yesterday was a real highlight, particularly with the weather that we've had. Um, and also getting to places like Lizard Point and Land's End there at the end and the beginning of the day where there were very few people around. We really had the chance to enjoy the scenery there. It really was um, really nice. And well, I think that it is possible to drive around the Kerno 300 in two days. I did dilly-dally a little bit yesterday. I met some great people, had some nice chats, enjoyed the sights a little bit too much yesterday morning and kind of put myself under pressure there for the end of the day. But had I not done that, had I not nearly run out of fuel, I think we would have made it comfortably before sunset. But if I've inspired you to do any of this or, or to come to Cornwall and visit, please don't think you have to do this over two days. You could do this over a week or two weeks and really take in all of the things that Cornwall has to offer. Now the NC 500, that's where I started, the North Coast 500, looks brilliant and I'm definitely going to do it one day. But as a road trip with a bit of a difference, well, I've really enjoyed the Kerno 300 and I'm really grateful that you came along with me. So thanks so much for joining me. And I suppose, well, that's about it, apart from giving this car a decent clean now. So as we say in Cornwall, I'll see you directly. Thanks very much again and uh, it's bye for now. Bye bye.